Father, we thank you tonight for your word. We come before it with excited hearts. We're, oh, we're, we're on the threshold of something so magnificent that none of us have capacity to see it all. It's, it's that place we've longed for all these years. This nation's been being prepared for, to be in this place all of its life. And the devil is working as hard as he possibly can to destroy it before it can get there, but he can't do it. He's been brought to naught. He's a defeated foe. Thank God he's under our feet. And we give you praise, Jesus, for defeating him and giving us your armor with which to stand against him. And we thank you and we praise you for it. And now we come before the word tonight looking unto you, Holy Spirit, for revelation from heaven. Words ha, that move heaven on the earth. Words of insight. Words of heavenly ideas. Thank you for it. Words of the concepts of faith, hope, and love. And we worship you tonight, Father. And oh, Lord Jesus, we are so grateful to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And tonight we look for and long for manifestation of your presence among us. You're welcome here, Holy Spirit. You're welcome here, Jesus to manifest yourself among us just any way you please. <laughs> you, what you please pleases us. And we thank you and we bless you tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, while I'm coming down here, open your Bibles to Mark chapter 11. Thank you, Jesus. We've been majoring all this week, ever since Thursday night, on one of the main fundamentals of faith. We've been talking about the basic fundamental of faith known as calling things that be not as though they were. And that one, in my experience over the last 53 years that I've been studying it and preaching it, it's actually the first, really the first message I ever preached. And uh, some people had to get over religion. All I had to get over was sin. I mean, that, that was my background. <laughs> I, when I came in, this, this first thing, I, this, this is the only thing I've ever known. And uh, somebody said, well, Brother Copeland, maybe you need to learn some other things. You need to be well-rounded. <laughs> I don't want to be well-rounded. <laughs> this is what I'm called to do. Yes. Well, Brother Copeland, don't you know anything else? <laughs> yeah. Well, when are you going to preach something else when you get this? <laughs> no, this is the primary assignment of this ministry. And other things that have to do with faith, the love of God, healing, deliverance, the righteousness of God, tearing down strongholds of fear, all of that revolves around, well, think about the armor of God, above all, taking the shield of faith, because none of it works without faith. None of it works without love. Faith works by love. It is by faith so that it might be by grace. Do you notice the faith the first? Well, everyone, every preacher, every believer, should have working knowledge of the fundamentals of faith. Every pastor, every apostle, every prophet, every evangelist, every pastor, every teacher should be 
a teacher and preacher of faith. Amen. Amen. We are faith people. God is a faith God. So, however, I, I do want to mention this fact, and this is misunderstood. It's so simple, you have to have help in misunderstanding. And that is my calling, the primary calling of this ministry was to study, learn, have working knowledge of the force of faith. Now that's primarily what I'm called to teach his people faith. Now, if, if it comes up sometime and I'm praying and I'm not quite sure what I'm supposed to preach in the service, I just go to Mark 11, 22, praise God. And, and I found out when I go there, see, that's my calling. I, when I go there, it just branches out from there to wherever I need to be. Now, if I, if I was a specialist in medicine, I wouldn't be trying to do all different kinds of medicine. I'd be doing what God called me to specialize in. If I was a specialist in the field of mechanics, instead of just a general mechanic, if I was, an, if I was a turbine engine specialist, then I don't want to be messing with something else. That's where I need to be studying. I don't need to get off into your job. Amen. And when we get together, we will cover everything. That's what covenant is all about. Are you listening to me? The families covenanted together for the purpose of one family specializes in one thing. Let, let's take for a simple uh, illustration. Here's a family that specializes in farming. They're farmers. That's what they do. Here's another family that specializes in the cattle business. They're, they're, they're ranchers. Well, the ranching people need the farmers. And the farmers need the ranchers. So it'd be good if they had children that married one another, <laughs> got the farmland and the ranch land hooked up together. That, that's a simple illustration of covenant. Let me tell you how Creflo Dollar explained it to me. <laughs> Creflo has a way about it. <laughs> you know, he and Pook in them. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> he is so funny. And I've been thinking about him and I, and I miss him. I haven't seen him quite a while. Anyway, he said, now I don't know why the white folks clap on one, two, three, four. And us folks clap on one, two, three, four. Oh. But we get together, we don't miss a beat. <laughs> That's covenant. <laughs> so I, I'm, just, I'm just doing my part. It's what we're called to do. And I'm glad you're part of it. And I'm glad you're my partner helping me do it. Praise God. So let's go to the classic teaching on faith where Jesus taught in the 11th chapter of the book of Mark. Now, I usually, as a practice, start at verse 22, but tonight I'm, I'm going to back up and Jesus, in verse 11, entered into Jerusalem and into the temple. And when he had looked around about upon all things, and now the evening was come, he went out unto Bethany with the 12. Now, why didn't he do anything? He didn't do anything. He didn't say anything. He just walked in there. And notice, 
it indicates he looked around at all things and the evening came. It indicates that he spent most of the day in there looking and listening. Now they were acting just as ugly that day as they're acting the next day, but he didn't do anything. He didn't say anything. Now that's one of the first wisdoms of faith and wisdom is the principal thing. Don't just be just flying on, just praying a scatter barrel and just quoting all the scripture you can think of and hope something sticks. <laughs> no. Now, emergency situation, yes. But when you do that, you do most of that in tongues. And in your praying and standing in the spirit, and then the scriptures that come up out of you, praise God. That is the wisdom of God. But I'm talking about life in general. And I had the Lord say to me one time, He said, Kenneth, you, you, you pray too quick. He said, take the time to meditate on this. Now let me, let me back up just a little bit. My father in the faith, Oral Roberts, told me this early on. He said, and he was talking specifically about finances, but this, this work in, in any situation, I don't care what it is, anything that's, that's an attack, anything that's a problem. He said, take the time to pray in the spirit in faith. Don't just be just talking in tongues. See, Jesus didn't say whatsoever thing you desire when you pray, believe you receive them and you'll have them as long as you're praying in a language you understand. No, he just said, when you pray, believe you receive it. But Brother Copeland, I don't know what I said. Well, that's, well you said it, didn't you? Then the words say that you speak in mysteries. Yeah. One translation says divine secrets with God. Yeah. Well, they're your mysteries. It also says pray that you also, pray also that you interpret. <laughs> that your mind be fruitful. Huh? So I, I, I don't ever, early in the morning, I'm up praying for you and praying for my partners. I'm praying for the nation. I'm, I, I'm taking care of my duties as minister of the gospel and, 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 and my prayer duties, praise God, and interceding and, and doing all of these things and praising God and worshiping God. When I get through, I do what Jesus said. I believe I receive what? I believe I receive my edification Amen. Amen. He that speaks in unknown tongues speaks not unto men, but unto God. How be it in the spirit? He speaketh mysteries and does what? <coughs> he edifies himself. In a natural language, he edifies the church. In a supernatural language, he edifies or builds up himself. We get our word edifice from that. It's the same word that a Greek person would use to charge up a battery, to build the battery up. Charging your battery, glory to God. Well, I believe I receive. Well, I didn't feel like I got anything. Well, what difference does that make? My, 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 come on. Jesus said it would, so it did. Amen. Amen. I remember the first experience I ever had with that. <clears throat> we were living there in Tulsa. I was a student at Old Roberts University. And I had been invited uh, to speak at a full gospel businessmen's fellowship meeting in Lubbock. And so I thought, hey, this is an opportunity now. So I, was, I drove to Lubbock and drove back and I was driving a worn out car. <laughs> So I was not all that speedy, all right? I had a lot of time on my head. <laughs> well, I, I listened to my tapes, and I listened to Brother Hagin, and this is back before alkaline batteries, 
and you had those big old fat carbon batteries and you had a, a message on one side of that tape and you turn it over and by the time you got to the end of that <laughs> second side, it was about gone. I had a grocery sack full of batteries and by the time I got back, I had a grocery sack full of dead batteries. <laughs> anyway, and, I, I, and, I, and I'd been reading and studying and I thought, glory to God, this is an opportunity now to edify myself. I'm going to edify myself. And so, and I mean, and this, this, this was hours. <laughs> I, just, I just prayed in tongues the whole way. Listen to Brother Hagin and prayed in tongues. The whole way. I've forgotten how many hours. It's several hundred miles from, from Tulsa to Lubbock. And I'd prayed in tongues the whole way. And I finally got home and I thought, well, if I'm edified, I don't know it. It seemed like about all I got out of this was a dry throat. Now, I had more sense than to say it, but, but I, I, come on, Jesus said I was edified in his word, right? The word says so. So I said, glory to God, I'm edified. Thank you for edifying <coughs> me. <laughs> and I was a bit tired and I came in and, and Gloria said, uh, she said something like, Kenna, uh, I know you've had a long drive and all that, but uh, Brother Tommy Tyson is teaching over at so-and-so's house. And this, this woman had a large prayer group, a large living room, and, and uh, uh, she could get, oh, 150, 200 people in there. And her prayer group was well known, noted for the power of God being in manifestation. And oh, Tommy Tyson, what, what, a, what, a, what a giant of a man, glory to God. And he's very close to glory to me. So I said, yeah, let me change clothes right quick and we'll go. So I cleaned up right quick and we went over there to the prayer group. And I, I'm tired. I've been driving for several hours and prayed in tongues all that way. But, oh, Tommy preached a message on the name of Jesus and, and it was just absolutely wonderful. And of course, Glory and I are on the front row. <laughs> so, once he finished his message, is there anyone here, he said, that needs healing in your body? Well, several hands went up. And he said, touch somebody and pray. And there was a woman right behind us. And he said, Brother Kenneth, would you and Gloria turn, just turn around and minister to Mrs. So-and-so? I said, sure. So I just, I just turned around and, and it, was, it was, you know, it was just kind of a prayer group laying on of hand things. It didn't even, it didn't seem to me like, you know, it wasn't like oral laying hands on anybody or something. I just said, you know, hallelujah in the name of Jesus and the power of God knocked her plumb back into a seat and it come up on the inside of me. And I thought, glory to God, I was edified. <laughs> Whoa. See, it didn't do anything for my flesh. The uh, boy, my spirit exploded when I said to them, and I thought, I've, I done learned me something. <laughs> and I've been doing it ever since too, praise God. Somebody asked Smiggles, uh, Smith, Smith Wigglesworth, the great apostle of faith. They said, um, what is the secret to your ministry success? You've had these many documented cases of people being raised from the dead. He said, hmm. I just go in, pray in tongues for about two hours and edify myself, go out at night and edify the people. Now that was his preparation to preach. Amen. And it works. It works. Now, it takes preparation, yes. But there are times when you prepare and you prepare and you prepare and you study and you work and you prepare and you got your message all up and you go out there and whoa, and proud God comes up in you and you don't know what happened to that message. It's just gone. 
<laughs> I mean, you would go in a whole totally different direction and the power of God falls. Oh, listen, he, he can take all my preparation anytime he wants to. I'll trade with him any day of the week. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Now then, <laughs> thank you, Lord Jesus. In this day and hour, it's so much different than it was back there 50 years ago. Back there then, in the first place, if you had a full gospel church with a thousand people in it, it was a mega church. Wasn't very many of them. Pentecostal and the full gospel churches were small. Now, some of those same churches today are truly mega churches. Amen. But I'm talking about 50 years ago, 45, 50, 51 years ago. And we would go into a place. It was amazing to me. Let me give you an example. Well, I'll just talk about that meeting in Tulsa. Now, I had listened to Brother Hagin all the way, I mean in Lubbock, all the way from Tulsa to Lubbock, hours. I listened to my tapes when I got there that night. I got up the next day and I listened to them all day long the next day. And then as, as it was in those days in the full gospel businessmen's fellowship, why we had that meeting, for instance, in Furr's cafeteria. And... Um, the, the meeting would begin later in the evening and people that were coming to that meeting, mo most would eat there in the cafeteria just at the time of the cafeteria closing. And then the people that were not part of that meeting would, would leave, the cafeteria would close and then they would bust the tables and so forth and, and the meeting would start. And sometimes we would have just about the whole cafeteria filled in those meetings. Boy, I tell you, those were good times, weren't they, Scott? They, oh, there's something, man. And, and I, I believe a great part of it's coming back. Anyway, <laughs> so I'd listen to those tapes all that time. And I, you know, I had my message all laid out on faith. And uh, <laughs> now in those meetings, every denomination you could think of was represented in those meetings. Well, my goodness, I read that verse there in the 11th chapter of Mark and I want you to know all those tapes came out at one time. I mean, I never, I just started preaching and just preaching all over the place. And I, you know how I am, I can't be still anyway. And, and, and I'm just all over the place. I'm preaching just all over the place and the bus boys are out there and I'm, I'm, I'm walking over the bus boys. And, and, and finally I, I got down here to, to this end down here. And this was the door where they, where they went into the kitchen. I went in there. I preached my way all the way through the kitchen, preaching to the, to, to the, all, all of the people washing dishes and everything. Else. They stopped and listened and praised me. And I stopped and talked to them a little bit and came back out the other door and just still preaching. Now the Baptists and the Methodists and the Presbyterians and the Catholics were saying revival, revival. And the old time Pentecost was saying wildfire, wildfire, wildfire. <laughs> well, bless God, maybe it was wildfire, but at least somebody will come watch you burn. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, they got on fire too. But here was, here was my point. We'd go into one of those small Pentecostal churches, full gospel churches. There, not much, nobody heard much about a charismatic church. This was just getting started. And preach the word of faith. 
that you're not moved by what you see and what you feel? Are you kidding me? I'm going to feel it if I want to feel it. (laughs) Then no young whippersnapper like you is going to come down here and tell me I can't feel something. (laughs) And just dare me. (laughs) Our meetings had to go three weeks at a time. It took two weeks to get rid of the unbelief and then you have a dynamite meeting for about a week. (laughs) And most of the people would be denominational people. And then close to the end of it, <laughs> the Pentecostal people say, hey, we better get on there. There's people getting healed. They're getting delivered over there. And oh, we had some times. Oh, glory to God. How wonderful and good. And those times are back again. Amen. We're going to see it. You're going to see it very soon. You're going to see where it's going to fall just like it did in Toronto. It's going to fall like it did in Brownsville. It's going to fall. People are going to be going to church seven days a week. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And it's not going to be just spotted here and spotted there. It's going to be all over the place. I saw it years ago. I saw it in one of the most powerful visions I've ever experienced. Well, maybe the most powerful that I've ever experienced. I was standing in one of those small churches. I was standing in the pulpit and, and I saw it. Uh, and uh, well, let, let, me, let me give you a little background for it. <laughs> Our home church, Grace Temple, there in Fort Worth, and Jerry's home church, and this is where Gloria and, and, uh, and the kids and, and I were baptized in water there in that church. Praise God. And the, the, the auditorium had a, was a sort of a A-frame shaped auditorium. It wasn't A-frame, but shaped like that. And the center of the, of, of the sanctuary came up sharply like this. And, and one night we're just praising God. Well, we'd been going there. This was in the it was either the tail end of the second week or the beginning of the third week and praising God and the, the glory haze just settled in up there in those rafters and I could see it and, and the people just, oh, it was just marvelous. Well, one of my close partners, Monty Montgomery, uh, during that meeting, his mother had, they had to go to the hospital and uh, he said, Mother Kenneth, would you come down tomorrow and lay hands on mother? I said, well, of course, Monty, I'd be glad to. So I went down there and laid hands on her. Now she is old time Methodist, <laughs> shouting Methodist. And I said, Ms. Montgomery, I, 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 you know, I wanted to encourage her. She was, she was down and, and rather weak. And I said, last night, I want to tell you what happened. And I told her what I just told you. She said, that's wonderful. But she said, now, when I was much younger and we lived down there at Gorman in that peanut country and we was in a small Methodist church and sometimes we didn't have a pastor. So we just come to church and just praise God. And she said, boys, Sometimes it gets so thick in there we couldn't see one another. And I thought, my little deal was hanging in the right. <laughs> and those old, those old time Methodists, it gets so thick in there, they could, the glory gets so thick. And she said, everybody get healed, everybody gets saved, everybody get full of the Holy Ghost. Amen. We're there again. 
Yes, yes, sir. Amen. Yes, sir. Thank you. We're there again. And I saw it. I was preaching there at Grace Temple on Sunday morning. It was during that, that meeting time. Standing in that pulpit, I saw it. And I, I, saw, I, I saw the glory fall. And I saw it fall in the streets. I saw it in downtown Fort Worth. And the glory and people just falling on their knees on in the, in the sidewalks and in, 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 in stores in town and everywhere the glory was, people were getting healed and getting saved right in the streets. And then after a while it lifted and when it lifted, people were, were following after it. And, and then it, and it settled in the churches and people just ran into the churches. Now, a good deal of this was symbolic because that's what that's for. The glory is to lead people into the churches. So it led people into the churches and the, the churches were just, oh, and they're just worshiping God and miracles just beyond anything you could imagine. And then it began to lift inside the churches. Some churches, it just lifted and was gone. And when it did, people ran out of that church looking for it somewhere else. And, and, and in my vision, what I saw, there was a church over across the street where it, it was still there. So they ran out of this church over into that one. Wow. Now, in some of those churches, the pastor just followed it and just went right on over there with them, right into that other church. But others got really mad because their people left and went into that other church. It destroyed their church and some of those pastors died. Yes. Folks, it's here. Yes. This is today because we're right at that point right now. Some of those things are already happening. And there are pastors, and I'm talking by the Spirit now, there are pastors that had absolutely rather lose it than, than to go into somebody else's church. It'll cost them their ministries. In some places, it'll cost them their lives. It'll cost them their family. By trying to hang on to their religious idea instead of following the move of God and following after the glory and following Jesus wherever he manifests himself. I'll tell you, I want to know where he is and that's where I want to be. Amen. 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 All right, Let, let's go back here now. We're still talking about the fundamentals of faith. Now, Jesus walked into that temple. You remember he said, I only do I only say what I hear my father say. I only do what I see my father do. Well, it's very obvious when he walked into that temple, he didn't hear the father say anything and he didn't, he didn't see the father do anything. So he went back to Bethany. Amen. Now, the scripture doesn't say this, but I know him. You know what he did. He knew he was supposed to be in that temple that day. He went in there and saw what he saw and heard what he heard. And before he did anything about cleaning it out or anything else, he went back home to where he was staying at Bethany there with his friends and prayed that night before he did anything. That's the first wisdom of faith. Amen. All right. Now he went into the temple. Then he went back to Bethany and on the morrow when they were come from Bethany, he was hungry. 
seeing a fig tree afar off having leaves, he came, if happily he might find anything thereon. And when he came to it, he found nothing but leaves. For the time of figs was not. You see, yet is, in, is italicized. At that point in time, if a fig tree was filled with leaves, there should be figs on it. If it was at the end of the season, there should still have been figs on there. Amen. That fig tree lied to him. The scripture said he answered it. That fig tree should have had some fruit on it. It cost him his life. <laughs> uh, there's a lesson in that somewhere. Glory to God. <laughs> Jesus answered and said unto it. Now count them. Nine words. No man eat fruit of thee hereafter forever. Now it was a far off. It was far enough away. He couldn't see that it did not have figs on it until he got over there to it. So, I mean that, you know, that that's a number of steps away. Well, obviously his disciples didn't follow him over there, but he said it loudly enough that they heard him. Now I want you to notice him. His disciples heard it. They came to Jerusalem. Jesus went into the temple and began to cast out them that sold and bought in the temple and overthrew the tables of the money changers and the seats of them that sold doves and would not suffer that any man should carry any vessel through the temple. And he taught saying unto them, is it not written, my house shall be called of all nations the house of prayer? You've made it a den of thieves. Now what they were doing, <clears throat> you brought your lamb in there. They would inspect your lamb and say, yours is blemished and sell you another one. Then after you're gone, they'd sell that lamb to somebody else claiming theirs was blemished. They had a con game going. Amen. And this was what they were doing. However, I, I want you to notice something. The mission was not the cleansing of the temple. The mission was the teaching. He came in there to teach, but he hadn't cleaned it out before he could teach. <laughs> Amen. The scribes and the chief priests heard it and sought how they might destroy him, for they feared him because all the people were astonished at his doctrine. When evening was come, he went out of the city and in the morning. Now they had, he went back to Bethany. They had to walk right past that tree. Now you know good and well they didn't wait until night Nobody's got a flashlight. The glory is not in manifestation. The fire by night. So there's enough light to see to get back to Bethany, which is a fairly decent walk. So you know, you know Peter well enough to know. He went by that tree Uh, if anything had been noticeable, he would have said something about it. Amen. Because the next morning he did. So somewhere, just, just figure up the timeline. Somewhere between 12 and 24 hours, well, when evening was come in 19th verse, that's 12 hours. And in the morning, that makes 24 hours. So somewhere between 12 and 24 hours. As they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. Now there is a specific lesson 
concerning faith. Faith is not a natural force. Faith is not a mental force. Faith is a spiritual force. And spiritual forces are far more powerful than the forces of physics. Far more. Amen. Spiritual things are from the inside out. When you got born again, when I got born again, when we accepted Jesus, we became what? New creatures. Old things passed away. All things became new. And all old things passed away. All things became new. And all things were of God, who is a spirit. You're a spirit. I'm a spirit being. The real you is a spirit. You can't see me. I can't see you. All you can see is my earth suit. If you go in space, you got to have a space suit. If you live here, you got to have an earth suit. Amen. And you can only see a little bit of my, my clothes suit. Amen. Amen. How many partners in here? You like my new suit? Yes. You should. You bought it. <laughs> well, it's not new, but it, I, it's one I haven't worn around here very much. And I don't care whether you like it or not, I like it. <laughs> Amen. But see, you can't see much of my physical body. My hands and my head are all of my physical body. Well, you can't see anything in my spirit. I'm in here looking out at you through these windows. Amen. So, as a spirit being, God is a spirit being. Faith is a spiritual force. Now, when before we were born again, we were raised as outside in people. That's the way we came up in the world. Everything we need is out there and we need to get it. Amen. Either my parents have it or an employer has it or the government has it and I need it. (laughs) And there's only just a handful of ways that I can manage to increase myself and add, add to me. I can work hard, borrow, borrow it, or steal it. Well, the third one is, is out. Borrowing needs to be out. But now where is it? The kingdom of God came on the inside of you and me with the moment we got born again. We were baptized into Jesus. We were baptized into the kingdom. Glory to God. What about Colossians, the first chapter? Giving God thanks. Who has delivered us from the authority of darkness and has, that happened the moment you got born again, delivered from the authority of darkness and translated into the kingdom of his dear son. Now the word translated dear son is agape. We were translated into the love kingdom. Glory to God. And love is God. And it's the most powerful thing in existence. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's big stuff. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. We're going to get something started here. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's what you get for sitting on the front row. I was sitting right where you're sitting. And Brother Hagin's just preaching. And he came up here, and boy, I'm telling you, I'm under the spout where the glory's coming out. And he's, he's standing here like this, and he's just preaching away. And my and God, and he turned around and he just slapped me. <laughs> Pow! Everybody said, Ooh! I didn't even feel it. 
I just jumped up and went shouting glory. <laughs> so you don't ever know what's going to happen. <laughs> and let's see here. <laughs> glory to God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Where in the world was it when I got off on that? <clears throat> now, the kingdom of God came, according to Jesus, into the inside. Everything you'll ever need is right in here. The creator of the universe is right in here. The El Shaddai God is right in here. The God of gods is right in here. Hallelujah. I mean, he knows more about cooking than anybody on earth. He knows more about sports cars than anybody on earth. He knows more about making thimbles than anybody on earth. He made it all. Ow! And he's right in here. You're pregnant with anything you'll ever, ever need. Give him a a loud praise. Hallelujah. Now then, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. Peter calling to remembrance saith unto him, Master, behold, the fig tree which you cursed is withered away. Now here was Jesus' answer. Jesus answering saith unto them, Have faith in God. What about my money? Have faith in God. What about my family? Have faith in God. What about my body? Have faith in God. Oh, what about? I don't care what it's about. Have faith in God. And this week we, we expanded that in talking about the almighty God, the El Shaddai God, the God who's more than enough, the God who's above everything, the God that created everything. And he created it all for you. Yes, sir. Not just a little piece of it. Glory to God. Hallelujah. More than you can see any way to use. Glory. And it's all right in here. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And faith will take it from in here in the realm of the spirit and the unseen and bring it into manifestation in the seen world and put it in your hand. It's shouting time in Hilton Memorial Chapel. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now count them. For verily I say unto you, whosoever shall say, under this mountain, be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea, shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he says shall come to pass, he'll have whatsoever he saith. I say unto you, whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea, Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. He spoke nine words to the fig tree. And he said, if you say nine words in faith to that mountain, it'll get up and leave. I like what Bill Winston said about this. He said he told us how to get rid of what we don't want and he told us how to receive what we do want. You don't want it, cast it into the sea. Something you won't believe you receive it. Praise God and you'll have it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Glory be to God. So now, that teaching, therefore I say unto you what things soever you desire when you pray, when you pray, When you pray, when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. 
And when you stand praying, forgive if you have ought against any, that your Father which is in heaven may forgive you your trespasses. Praise God. That is the first fundamental of faith. Faith filled words dominate the laws of sin and death. For the law of the spirit of life, that was the law of faith, for the law of the spirit of life. You want to finish it for me? Made me free from the law of sin and death. So the law of the spirit of life, the law of faith, faith filled words dominate the law of sin and death. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Isn't that just about the most exciting thing you can think of? Everything bad is under the law of sin and death. It's under the curse, all sickness, all disease. And then the apostle Paul wrote in the 12th chapter of the book of Romans, God has dealt to every man, every born again child of God, the measure of faith. Hallelujah. You have a measure of mountain removing faith on the inside of you. You have a measure of of planet creating faith. The very turn to the book of Hebrews. Glory to God. First in the book of Hebrews, Let's look there in the very first chapter. God, who had sundry times in a different manner spoken times past to the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things. Well, glory to God, we're joint heirs with him. What does that say you? We own everything. <laughs> Woo, glory to God by whom also he made the worlds, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, upholding all things by the word of his power. Amen. Now look at the 11th chapter of the book of Hebrews and fasten your seatbelt. Hebrews chapter 11 Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, for by it the elders obtained a good report. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the Word of God so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. It was not made out of nothing. It was made out of something you cannot see. It was made with the spiritual force of faith. Glory to God. We live in a word of faith, a word of faith, created universe. He believed it in his heart and said it with his mouth. And the Spirit of God was moving on the face of the deep. The Spirit of God was moving and nothing was happening. Nothing could happen until the faith substance was released. And faith is released in God's words. That book you have in your lap, a copy of the two dynamic blood covenants, that those words are filled with God's faith. Just as much as the words when he spoke them and said, light be, the light was. Amen. Isn't that right? Isn't that so? (laughs) Amen. 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 God's always moving. The great and mighty spirit of the living God is always moving. He's never static. But now if something's not happening in your life, strong possibility 
You're not giving him anything to work with. Amen. Faith-filled words. Amen. He's moving. Amen. He's the agent. And all the angels work for him. He's the Lord of hosts. Lord of the Sabaoth. Amen. Those angels are ready that you're going to have to say something. And you're going to have to say it in faith. Hallelujah. So we live in, well, let, let's look at it again. Go back over that to the 11th chapter of Hebrews and put your eyes on this one more time. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that things, say things, things, things which are seen were not made of things which appear. I've heard people say he created it out of nothing. No, he didn't. No, he didn't. Faith is the substance. It's not nothing. It's just something you can't see. Spiritual force. So we cannot change. This is the reason why the fundamentals of faith are so vitally important. We cannot change the fact. Nobody can. Every human being breathing on this planet today, billions of us, every one of us live and are dominated. We live in a word created, word upheld environment. This universe is word created and word upheld. Amen. And it's not, global warming is not going to change anything. That's right. No human being has the right or the authority to destroy this planet. Now we've got some really terrible weapons. But no, no. And it's certainly not going to happen in 12 years because of what the cows are doing. Yes. Amen. Amen. They've been doing what they've been doing for a long time. <laughs> Well, bless her heart that she's, and I'm serious about this. It, it, she's, well, she's been thrust into a place where she had no business, way over her head. And she's working really hard trying to satisfy the people that put up all that money and got her in there. And she's completely, totally deceived. And she needs a lot of prayer. Amen. Amen. So we just pray for her. Glory to God. There's global warming coming. You talk about greenhouse gas. <laughs> Whoa. Oh yeah. But we won't be here. We will be having us a party. Glory to God. Amen. And watch this thing burn. And then our father's going to gather us all together and he's going to say, All right, guys. Watch this. And we're going to spend the next several centuries going, wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. Then he's going to call you over there. He's going to say, hey, Bubba, come here. I'm going to, say, I'm going to let you make a little bitty planet. You want to drive one? <laughs> yeah, yeah, come on, Lord. Let me do one. <laughs> hey, Jesus. <laughs> I love what I do. Glory to God. I love this gospel better than I love my life. Thank you, Lord Jesus. 
Faith is the key ingredient that brings love's desire for this planet to pass. Does Jesus heal you because you have faith? Now it's necessary to have faith, but he heals you just because he loves you. He's the God that wants everything for you. More than you can see any way to use. Abundantly supplied. He said, I came that you might have life and have it more abundantly. How abundant is that, Jesus? More abundant. You mean that? Yeah, more than that. Well, about, yeah, more than that. Well, what about, oh yeah, more than that. Well, yeah, yeah, more than that. Hallelujah. Because working with him and growing in the world of health, growing in the world of finance, growing in all these ways and growing up in him, growing up walking in him and walking with him at his bidding and command, glory to God. Then as your finances increase, praise God, and you're using it up just as fast as it comes in and the, the flow it continues to come and more souls are coming into the kingdom, glory to God. And inside addition, I'll laugh at you and do ugly interviews because your airplane is so big. Yeah. <laughs> I enjoyed that interview. <laughs> it kind of blindsided me out there, but I, but I enjoyed it. Amen. Got a chance to preach a little yes, bit sir. there. Yes, sir. And, and I really admire that, that young woman, that interview. Hey, she's good at what she did and what she does. And I told her so. And uh, I asked her her name. She told me her name's Lisa. And, and um, so I prayed for her. And her, her producer asked her his name, I believe his name was Gary, and prayed for him. And, and I turned around and prayed for the cameraman and he said, uh, 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 thank you. <laughs> you know, his heart, nobody had ever done that. Somebody that, you know, they're trying to just blow you away. He's a lot of fun. Amen. But you think I had fun. You, you ought to see the way Jesse, oh dear Lord. <laughs> well, they know you just getting mad at these people. And if they don't like big airplanes, <laughs> um, that's just too bad. Cause I'm believing for bigger and bigger and bigger. I know because I've seen a couple of them in times past in a vision that I'm, that I'm not going to go into right now, but I saw myself standing outside the whole crowd that came to the airport and they said, would you please come pray for these people and get them out of here? We've, they've nearly shut the airport down. And I stepped out on a platform and when I, and when I looked, the, the, it was a jumbo jet. And it was full of goods and it was full of evangelistic supplies and, and it was, it was loaded, praise God. And, and people going in and having meetings and, and oh, God bit of that is symbolic, but I'm telling you that big airplane's not symbolic. The day's coming. I said, the day is coming. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Now then, in, in closing this, let me finish what I was saying there. Every human being on the planet lives in a word, faith created universe and atmosphere. We live in a word upheld faith created universe. The laws that govern this universe are the laws of words. Words are the most important thing. Words were not created primarily for communication. Words were primarily created for power release. Yes. That's the way Adam was supposed to have 
control this planet. But he lost it and had to, he, he came down out of the level of light down into the natural realm, which is just below the speed of light. That light line, he used to operate on both sides of the light line, like God. Amen. Amen. Now your spirit, you were born again. You are a child of the light, born of the light. And we have and wear the armor of light. That's light energy. Amen. You, uh, you should have gotten more excited Amen. about it. Than that. That's the most powerful thing there is. All material, all natural thing. The molecular structure of that bench and all, all natural things is, is moving. It's vibrating all the time, very rapidly. But it's still below the speed of light. Any material or natural thing were to come beyond the speed of light, it would disappear. It would be in the light realm or in the realm of the spirit. Angels, let, let's say for instance, people that are in heaven right now. I have family there, so do you. They do not have physical natural bodies, but they don't know it. Now they know they don't, but they have no sensation of not having a body because their spirit to spirit is firm. An angel and a born again new creature in heaven can feel one another. But now there's angels in this room right now. I have one that works for me all the time, 100% of the time. There are people that have seen him. And, um, but I can't, I, I, I can't feel his presence. I know he's here and I know what he's doing. But I, I have spirit to flesh is not firm. He can't feel me. And I certainly can't feel him. He can see me and I can't see him. He does have an advantage. <laughs> Amen. Amen. But now Jesus lives in a glorified human body, a flesh body. Now I, we're going to get something here. Listen to me carefully. He said, he sat down and he ate. He ate food. Yes. 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 And he said, handle me. A spirit hath not flesh and bone as you see me have. No blood. All of his blood is in the heavenly mercy seat in the heavenly holy of holies forever. Amen. Amen. That's enough to, to light your candle right there, brother. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, Jesus, now, now follow me here. He's like Adam was before he fell. He was not an immortal man. He was an eternal man created to live forever and just continually to cellular reproduce forever. And he lived above the light line. 
To him, flesh to spirit was firm. To Jesus, spirit to spirit is firm. Spirit to flesh is firm. He can shake hands with you. You can see him and feel his touch. Amen. Amen. He can shake hands with an angel and see him and feel his touch. He's a glorified human man. That's where we're headed. The next step is the great resurrection. That's where faith is taking us. And now we're going into 2020, a year of a a, a great change and and great visions and, and, and insights and dreams. Praise God. And there, we're going to have instances and, and times when we step across that light line in, in a dream or in, in, a, in an open vision and step across that line. Now, what happens when an angel is given an assignment? They're spirit beings. This, this room full of angels right now that you can't see. But when they slow down below the speed of light, suddenly you could see them in order to communicate with us. And I dare say most every one of us in here, because of the scripture, have entertained angels unaware and didn't know they were angels. You getting anything out of this? Well, I am. I'm learning as much as you are (laughs) while flowing in this flow. So this is the reason why the fundamentals of faith are so vital and so important. And it's so important to learn how to, to walk in these fundamentals, believe it in your heart and say it with your mouth. That puts our spirit being operating up, up in that light area. The entrance of his word giveth light. Now, it's not just talking about insight. That's good. Insight is powerful. And that is part of the anointing. We're not just, and that's good. I'm not not putting that down. That's part of it. But what I'm talking about is light energy. I'm talking about the most powerful thing that the earth has anything to do with it. Light energy, laser, light amplified. That's what laser stands for. It's an acronym for amplified light. And it is so powerful, material things can't stand up under the power of it. And it's on the inside of you and me. Living and walking by faith. What do you think miraculous healing is? See, healing, healing is a, is a physical process. Somebody breaks a bone, put it in a cast, you know, reset the thing. What is it, four, six weeks, and it's mended. The process doesn't change. But the anointing, a manifestation of light, energy, that process happens in seconds instead of weeks. And the more we learn and the more we walk and live by faith and understand and have working knowledge of the fundamentals of faith and we learn not to short circuit the thing by calling things that are the way they are and crying and round about and squalling around about things, trying to change things with your emotions and it doesn't work. Well, I didn't much think it's going to work anyway. <laughs> well, at least you had one thing, right? <laughs> no, that's the reason these fundamentals are so important. Now, what is the next fundamental of faith? It'll not work in an unforgiving heart. Why? Unforgiveness is darkness. We're dealing with light 
energy, Amen. not the dark side. We just hit pay dirt right there. Yeah, it's not just because God didn't want us to act ugly. He's giving us laws. He, he, he would, he would love if it worked. It just won't work. It just doesn't work. And the more you learn, the more highly qualified you are to walk in power, the less you can get away with. It's time to grow up. Amen. It's time to quit being so touchy. Yes. It's time to walk in love. It's time to quit getting all upset at politicians and news media. Those people are going to do what they're going to do. Now we intercede and we stand in the gap and we vote. We V-O-T-E vote. If you don't vote, you just voted for the wrong one. That ballot is your seed. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And if you don't vote, shut your big blab mouth. You don't have a gripe coming for four more years. Thank you very much for that great enthusiasm you had for that. <laughs> Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Well, Brother Copeland, how do I know for whom to vote? Read the platform. Ah, oh, they don't pay attention to those platforms. You just think they don't. The politicians themselves don't mention much about it, but that's what drives the parties because the politicians don't make the platform. The people the people make those platforms and hand it to those politicians and it becomes the mandate of the party. And you can't stand on just several planks. They're hooked together. Amen. That's the reason they're called planks. They're all hooked together. You can't just stand there on one. You're hooked <laughs> to the whole thing. And then you're spiritually responsible for what that person does. And if they're killing babies, you're an accomplice to murder. And we'll be held responsible for it. And things don't go well for baby killers. Now, let me tell you something though. I got some good news for you. Anybody in here that's had an abortion, I have some wonderful news for you. Your baby's waiting on you on the other side. Oh, yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The Lord's forgiven you of that. He forgave you the minute you did it. But you have to receive that forgiveness. Amen. Amen. Isn't he good? Yes. It, I'm, he's just good, good. That's just all there is to it. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Did we get anywhere tonight? Yes, sir. Now, I, I, I do want to close it with this. This is the final one. Faith will not work in an unforgiving heart. Abraham's blessing cannot be received with Thomas's faith. Faith calls things that be not as though they were. Faith demands corresponding action. Faith without works or corresponding action is dead being alone. Let's close with the book of James, please, if you'll turn there. Oldest book in the New Testament written by the half brother of Jesus. That's the reason the book of James is so filled with just wonderful wisdom, glory to God. 
He was raised in the household with Jesus and saw him live and walk by faith. In the um, in the book of James, chapter one, verse twenty two. Be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. If any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he's like a man beholding his natural face in a glass, for he beholdeth himself and goes his way, and straight Ray forgets what manner of man he was. Now, why? why how can you look in? Everybody, everybody in this place looked in the mirror today. I dare say there's not a soul in this place that didn't look in a mirror at least once today. Now, tell me the length of your nose. <laughs> Inches or centimeters? Either one. Millimeters? <laughs> Why? You never have decided to find out how long it is. If you ever measure it, you will never forget it. <laughs> Probably because I pulled this on you, some of you will go home and measure your nose. <laughs> About two inches long, wouldn't you say? It's exactly two inches long. Because <laughs> I measured it. I wanted to be the one that did it. <laughs> but see, I had to have reason to measure it. I had to make a decision. I'm going to see when I look in that mirror, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see something specifically. When you go to the mirror of the Word, you go to it with a specific design in your heart, in your mind. I'm going to act on this thing. This is final authority in my life. Whatever it says I am, I am. Whatever it says I can do, I can do it. Whatever it says I have, I have it. It's mine. Amen. Now that makes it come alive to me. It's no longer just a religious book. Amen. Now, glory to God. It has become the testament It is the last will and testament of Jesus of Nazareth. Some of you need to go to the reading of the will. That's what churches should be. That's where you go to read the will on Sundays and find out what belongs to me. Come on. I said, come on. He's the only man to ever write a perfect will, die, raise from the dead, and become the judge and probate his own will. And he's our Lord. And everything in there belongs to us. Oh, dear. Lord Jesus. And that's what we're doing tonight. We've been talking about the will and what belongs to us in that will. Amen. And most people put it off until they get to heaven. Well, you know, that's kind of strange. I mean, my dad, A.W. Copeland, I was the only child, the only heir. Well, I don't, I don't get what Mr. Copeland left me when I die and go to heaven. No, I got it when he died and went to heaven. When, when my older brother went, amen, Jesus, I got it when he died and went to heaven, not when I died and get to heaven to get it. Come on, shout it with me, somebody. Thank you, Lord Jesus. All right. Now then, come down to the second chapter, the 14th verse. 
of James, James chapter two, verse 14. What does it profit my brethren, though a man say he hath faith and hath not works, can faith save him? If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you say to them, depart in peace, and be ye warmed and filled, notwithstanding you give them not those things which are needful to the body, what does it profit? It doesn't do any good to tell somebody to be warm and you don't give him a coat. Or be full, brother, and don't feed the man. (laughs) There's actually no faith there. The woman with the issue of blood, let's turn over there to her. She is our example here. Fifth chapter of the book of Mark. And I've been closing for 45 minutes now. (laughs) Well, I'm like Brother Jerry. (laughs) I try to be like Brother Jerry. He's a good example to follow. 25th verse, a certain woman which had an issue of blood 12 years suffered many things and many physicians, spent all that she had and was nothing better, but rather grew worse. When she'd heard of Jesus, came in the press behind and touched his garment. For she said, if I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. And straightway the fountain of his blood dried up and she felt in her body she was healed of that plague. You notice it dried up and then she felt it. She didn't feel it and then believe it. She believed it and then felt it. Very important. Amen. Jesus immediately knowing in himself that virtue or power, dunamis, had gone out of him, turned him about in the press and said, who touched my clothes? And his disciples said unto him, you see the multitude thronging thee and sayest thou who touched me? He looked around about to see there that had done this thing. <clears throat> but the woman fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her came, fell down and before him and told him all the truth. He said unto her daughter, thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of that plague. Very important things to notice. Number one, she heard faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Somebody was relaying his preaching to her. Now this is in Capernaum. It's his hometown. So I'm quite sure she's, I mean, she's listening for everything she can get every time he comes home. Amen. And she has somebody obviously relaying the messages to her. One of the laws of faith. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Number two, faith does not work in an unforgiving heart. She had to have forgiven those physicians. And got no better, but rather grew worse and spent all she had on a bunch of doctors that made her worse. You can get real bitter over something like that, but obviously she didn't. Glory to God. Law number two. Amen. Faith worked because she didn't have an unforgiving heart. Faith came and she forgave. Praise God. Now then, corresponding action. She put the fundamental laws to faith in operation. She said it. She believed it. Then she did it. She acted on it. She could have believed that and said, I know it. I know as well as I know my name. If I could touch the clem of him, I just touch his clothes. I know I'd be healed, but I can't get out there. I'm bleeding now. Look at me. I'm skin and bones. I'm in no shape to get out there. And besides that, it's against the, 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 the Bible law for me to be out there with this issue of blood, this plague. They'll stone me for this. I can't do it. I just can't do it. I just can't do it. I just can't do it. Now, she's not saying anymore, if I touch his clothes, I'll be healed. She's saying, I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't do it. If I could touch his clothes, I'll be healed. But I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't do it. She'd have died believing it would work, but she would have died in that room. She'd have finally bled to death. No 
corresponding action. Once you get to that point, you have to begin to act like the Bible is absolutely true. If it's a baby you're believing for, I mean, build a nursery. I don't care how many doctors told you that you, you can't have babies. Oh, come on. Ask Abraham and Sarah. <laughs> build a nursery. Glory to God. Hallelujah. If you're believing for your child to come home, set the table every time you fix supper. Get ready for him to come. Amen. You have a child incarcerated someplace and they told you he or she had never get out of prison. Hey, don't, you don't have to believe that. Love opens prison doors and faith changes things. I got, I was really amused uh, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, my son is, is, is uh, the uh, starting quarterback for the University of the Incarnate Word. And uh, he's the only football player I've ever seen that had the word on the back of his helmet. <laughs> anyway, and, and uh, <laughs> ESPN was, and they were playing uh, uh, Baptist University. And, and of course he goes to a Catholic school and uh, in San Antonio and the ESPN guy said, well, you got two faith-based teams going against one another here and you know, prayer changes things. <laughs> and he said it like he knew what he was talking about. You know, I said, yes, it does brother. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So corresponding action. Amen. There's no way that Jonathan which is my grandson's name. There's no way, I don't care how good a quarterback he is, and he's good, but there's no way he can learn all the plays, do everything his coach says do. But he's going to have to, he's going to have to meet that with some corresponding action. He has to work hard. He has to practice. He has to do all these things. And of course, Jonathan knows how to live and talk by faith. Amen. He never accepts defeat. He's, he's raised that way. And so the corresponding action, even though he's good at what he does, he has to continually have on his heart and mind of becoming better at what he does. Better, better, always growing. And he still has to make good grades. And he does. And I thank God for his coach, Coach Eric Morris. I mean, all the grades of that football team have come up since he's been coach. He's a man of God. Praise God. And he teaches them that they're a family and that God is love. And we play hard and we work hard, but we're in school. <laughs> What's he doing? Corresponding action. He's a man of faith. Yeah. But you have to work hard. You can't just sit around and pray and then play on Saturday night. Don't work that way, Bubba. Oh, wouldn't it be fun if it did? No, you're going to come up against some other bunch going to put knots all over your head, man. Cause they had corresponding action. So what they believe. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. That's a simple illustration, but it's even more so in the realm of faith. Act like it's already done because in the spirit it is. I'll close it with the one sentence that I just so much wanted you to get this week. God's word is. His covenant is. He said, I am. He's what he is, whatever you need him to be. That's what he is. He's whatever you can believe for. 
That's what he is. That's who he is. You need healing. His word is healing. By his stripes, ye were healed. If you were, you are. But it has to be appropriated. And it's time to pull yourself up, glory to God, and begin to act like every word of its true glory to God. I was in Jamaica and the, day, the morning I got there, I'd already preached 11 hours the day before. And I was really tired and I wasn't supposed to preach till that night. And I knew the man's pastor of the church. And this was in Jamaica's first freedom anniversary. So, you know, it's it back in the seventies a long time. And he said, can I come on up here and sit on the platform? I said, no, nah, Keith, I'd rather just, no, nah. he said, get up here on the platform. So I went up and I, I was really tired. But I went up there and sat down on the platform and he said, preach. Oh, preach, he said. I said, okay. So I walked up to the, to the, to the podium and I had a little microphone about, about that large. I, I picked it up. I turned around. And I said, Keith, how, how long do you want me to take? He said, give them, this was about, oh, this was about 930. He said, give them off from, uh, one to two. <laughs> and I said something like, uh, are you kidding? He said, don't give them off at all. You don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> well, by the, and I gave them off from one to two because my, by the time it came one o'clock, I couldn't speak much above a whisper. And I was having to talk into that microphone. I just nearly had to put it in my mouth for you to be able to hear me. So I, Went back there in the, where, where, they, where they were having lunch. And I'm praying in a local opera. Oh, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Lord, if I was to ask my throat if it's healed, he'd say, no. If I was to ask the people if I was healed, he'd say, They'd say, no, but I didn't ask me. I didn't ask my throat. And I'm certain I'm going to ask the people I found in your word where it says I am healed. Glory to God. It says by by your stripes, I was healed. So I'm healed. And I thank you very much. I was wanting to back out on this thing so bad and just tell him, I can't talk, man. You preach. Because it hurt. And I got to go preach an evening service up in the mountains. No, not going to do that. So I went out there and I finished praying for the, in the spirit there in the dining room. And I went out and so I said the same thing to the people. I said, if I would ask you if I'm healed, you'd say, no. But I didn't ask you. I went to the Word of God and thank God it says by His stripes you were healed. And I want you to know, thank God I'm healed in the name of Jesus. I mean instant. Scott, instant. It was stronger than it had been. The people just went straight up and I want you to know the move was on. And a few minutes later there was a crutch went right straight up in the air like that and people started getting healed all over that place. There was a woman that her, her, her children brought her in there in a sheet. She was rolled up in a ball. Her head touched her knees. She couldn't lift herself up. They, she was lying in the, in the aisle and all of a sudden she got up and just ran up and down the aisle. But it was acting like the word was true because it is. Did you get it? Yes. Acting like the word is true because his word is true. Stand on your feet, please. Give the Lord a praise. Praise his name. I said, give the Lord a praise. Worship him. 
Give him honor and praise. Give him honor and thanksgiving for this marvelous meeting that we have had. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Someone has had trouble with a broken bone in your jaw and it's still sore and just feels like it's not going to heal. I tell you what, it's healed right now. It is healed right now. You'll not have any more trouble with that. It is healed right now. Praise God. No more migraine headaches. No more migraine headaches, I said. No more migraine headaches. Say it. I call my head well. I do not have headaches. I have a healed head. I have a healed brain. And I have a strong mind. I'm strong in my spirit. I'm strong in the Lord. I'm strong in the power of his might. I have a wonderful memory. My brain, praise God, is being renewed every day. My mind is being renewed. My mind is my mind. Satan, don't be telling me what to think. I don't believe anything you say. I believe the Word of God. I think God's words after him. I think the word. I talk the word. I remember the word. I have the word. And the word of God has me. I'm a word person. I live in the power of his word. My feet are shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. The gospel, of peace. the gospel is the power of God. By wearing the armor of God, I walk in the power of the gospel. I think the gospel. I read the gospel. I preach the gospel. I think the gospel. I have the gospel and the gospel has me. I'm a believer. I'm not a doubter. I'm going somewhere to have victory. I don't do battle with the devil. I do victory on the devil. I'm a victorious believer. And this is the victory that overcomes the world. This is the victory that overcomes debt. This is the victory that overcomes sickness and disease. This is my victory. This is the victory. Even my faith. I am a world overcomer. Whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. I'm born of God. I'm a world overcomer. And I'm a world overcomer that's overcoming the world. I am an overcoming overcomer. <laughs> Say that again. I am an overcoming overcomer. I am an overcoming overcomer. I am an overcoming overcomer. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Rejoice in it. Rejoice in it. Again, I say rejoice in it. Rejoice in it. Rejoice in it. Rejoice. Rejoice and praise Him. Rejoice and praise Him. I said rejoice and praise Him. Rejoice and praise Him and worship Him. Glory to God. Glory to God. Someone that's had very weak and painful knees, your knees are being restored right now and will continue to be restored. And over the next three to five days, you will say, my knees are well. Glory to God. And I never thought I'd see the day. 
You know, you are so fun to preach to. I mean, what are you doing about this time next year? We'll be here. Somebody said, Brother Coleman, you're supposed to say, we'll be here, Lord willing. I've already found out he's willing. I found that out before I said that, glory to God. He's willing and we'll be here, hallelujah. God loves you and we love you. And Jesus is Lord.